All right, battery issues with the H10. So many have the H10 and we have all different iterations. All they were was stickers on them. The first one came in a leather case, plugged in a wall with a cord and it was a general electric. And that's what I worked, uh, learned on some 45, 48 years ago. And this is its predecessor or this is its, uh, uh, you'd say 2.0 batteryless one. I'm trying to modify the battery. So these come with lead acid batteries. And many of you know, we usually find out that these lead acid batteries have a short life. They go bad easy. If you overcharge them, you accidentally leave the charger and you go to sleep, left it on too many hours. You can overcharge these because they don't have good regulation. There's no regulation in here to protect them when you plug in the charger. Uh, the little bricks aren't that great and these get a short life and they don't last that long. If you look at it in here, uh, these are 2,900 amp hours. That's 2,900 milliamps. So this is 2,900 milliamps of capacity. Well, this is 7,500 milliamps of capacity. This is 6,500 milliamps of capacity. Now this is dangerous. I don't recommend LiPo batteries. These are LiPo batteries that you use on RC drones and stuff like that. LiPo and charging in a house is a no-go. You do it in your backyard. If, if you even did it in your house, you put them inside a Weber barbecue and put them on a concrete stone with the, the lid on because these are known to burst into flames and cause fires. You've all seen the videos. But I am experimenting with these. I'm about to experiment with these because of their capacity. 6,500, 7,500. Now, I did get the 100C batteries. These are rated in C. This is their discharge rate, how hard you can push them. Well, this almost draws no power, draws very little power. It won't stress the battery at all. So what I did was I got some of the highest rating, highest temperature rated batteries that can take massive amounts of discharging and I'm just gonna push them with a little bit. So basically I got something that can haul a tractor, but I'm only gonna haul a grocery bag from the store without racing. So I got really overkill on the protection side of LiPo batteries. I will be doing a video when I come up with replacing this lead acid battery technology with LiPo. Now safer is, this is, uh, Lithium iron phosphate. Lithium, this is out of a Fisker. This is a battery out of a car. And so this is a whole bunch of plates, right? Each one of these are a cell going right here. And I was just doing some top balancing on this one. That's a massive amount of power right there. Uh, yes, I'm putting my hands on it because it's only 24 volts and it's charged. Uh, but this one right here, this is 7,200 milliamps of safe battery technology. So here, what it, that's what it looks like. Just a, about the same thickness, actually about exactly the same thickness, so there's no problem here. And what I was doing was I was trying to figure out which technology I'm going to use. If I was gonna charge this in my house, it's going to be lithium iron phosphate, a very safe battery that could fit right there. And I could have a little charge controller and I could have a balance controller. That's, that, that's one thing. Here's lithium, uh, lithium, the regular lithium batteries that you have uh, hear about. So these are the re regular lithium ion batteries. Here's the little holders. Here's what they look like in a holder. All I need is four of these. So I could have four of these or I could double gang them and I could put four more inside there and I can have eight. I could fit eight of these and double them and you could get these anywhere from 2200 milliamp hours to 3200 milliamp hours so if i got 3200 milliamp hours this would be 12 volts right there and then i got another 3200 milliamp hours and then i ran them in parallel so there i would have 6400 milliamps that would be like this one right here of a safer battery technology because that is uh, lithium ion not as bad as lipo but man, these things pack a lot of power. And, uh, but I think I will be going with, for safety's sake, 
with this, this is 7,200 milliamp hours. So I could run that inside there too. Those are the options. But uh, you know these, if you buy them from the company that sells these, these are $70 a piece. And uh, you can buy some cheap eBay and Amazon ones for $25, $27 or so like that. And uh, But I use this too much and I, I kill it. It has such a short life. And, uh, and, you know, it's only 2,900 milliamps. And so I when I use this a lot in one day, this goes dead in a day. Even though I have my backup um, to do. So here's another safer bet. They already have these with a charge controller inside of them. It has uh, thermal protection. It has a little computer right in here that protects it the way it gets charged. You could buy a module. When I do this way, or I do this way, or I do this way, I have to add protection. I cannot just add the battery. You have to have thermal management and you have to have charging and you have to balance charge. This is a balance charger. This is a special balance charger here and you can see the little pins here in the side that will go to those pins these have to be balanced charged if you don't balance charge them you can overcharge or undercharge different cells and you'll cause a misbalance you see there's one two three four cells in this one there's three cells inside this one that's a three cell one because you see this says 11 volts and this says 14.8 if you mischarge one of these cells, you can cause an explosion and a fire. Uh, if, if you've ever seen the electric vehicles go up in flames, that's how these go. If you ever see the little scooters go up in flames, that's what these are. All right, guys, that's how I say it. I'll bring you a future video up when I figured out which method I will go with. Uh, whatever gives me the longest run time, it'll probably be these big boys here, or if I double stack these, not sure. And um, I'm still undetermined about this one here. You can make this into a jumper and you can put a plug on this one. And while you're out in the job site, if your low battery light comes on, you can have a remote plug and you can just sit it in here inside the case and have it plugged and jumped into the charger power. And so while you're on the job, you run out of battery, you run out to your truck and you just throw this in and you plug it in right there and keep on using your device. That's an option. All right, guys, I'll see you.